we have to now, as, as part of, you know, what people are doing, uh, uh, do, giving papers here at the conference on uh, digital history, on the effects of various kinds of technologies, uh, whether they are clickers or iPads or whatever, on student learning in different disciplines and fields, I mean, all very exciting. And I think one of the things I'd love to see the ISOTL community start dealing with uh, is the effect on the availability, the distribution, and the usability of scholarly work on teaching and learning that makes use of the affordances of the web and of technology. Uh, so how could, for example, the ISOTL community develop a capacity to do rapid turnaround on pieces of scholarship of teaching with still some form of peer review, but not the kind of peer review that slows things to a halt in other fields, and also not the sort of peer review that we know from studies that have been done on the sociology of scientific publication are utterly unreliable. Because you give it to three other reviewers, you get a different review. How can, the, how can you almost crowdsource peer reviewing? And is the way to do that that anything can be put on the web, and then whether it stays or not, or how it stays, depends upon how the community responds to it. And I'm only going to start reading articles that 30 people have said they've already read and they give a thumbs up to. It becomes like restaurants. So it really becomes part of an ongoing conversation and not a what almost looks like a set of oral histories of dead people.